Hello everyone and welcome to this new DIY engineers video. In this video I'll be going over the A4988 stepper motor controller. In the video I'll be covering the basics of the driver as well as the pins and micro stepping. I'll walk you through how to set VREF, the reference voltage, to avoid driving excessive current into your stepper motor. I'll go over the diagrams to connect to your Arduino Uno or to connect to a Node MCU. And of course I'll be walking you through how to program it in Arduino for either the Node MCU or the Arduino Uno. And this will be for multiple examples, of course, as usual, including constant rotation of the motor, rotating the motor, mimicking a clock, and moving to specific positions with your stepper motor as needed. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here we have the A4988 stepper motor driver. In this video, we'll be going on multiple things but first, let's go ahead and take a look at the actual, you know, controller. You can see that it has multiple pins. Um, it has at the top a heat sink to make sure it doesn't overheat. Um, you can see the potentiometer near the bottom center, near my thumb, which is used for um, overcurrent regulation to prevent, you know, passing higher currents than you want to your motor. Um, so we'll be going over plenty of details on this stepper motor driver. Uh, just wanted you to at least take a quick look at it. And now we'll jump into talking a little bit about the, what a stepper motor is in case you don't have enough background. And then we'll jump right into the meat of this video. So let's get started. So now what is a stepper motor? A stepper motor is a type of DC motor that divides its motion into individual steps of equal angular rotation. It's common for a step motor to have, let's say, 200 steps per rotation or steps per revolution, which is the case of the motor that I'm going to be working with in the examples in this video. This is a NEMA 14 HS10 0404S, the one you're actually seeing in this picture. So this one will have 200 steps per revolution. So if I had to do one rotation, I would want the motor or the shaft to rotate 200 steps. And so due to the nature of this motor, we can control the motion down to the step, or actually even more if you're micro-stepping. In this video that I'm showing here, I'm actually using a push button to tell the motor to move one step every time I push the button. So you can see it can be very accurate. This motor, it is, it's very accurate. It can be used for many applications where a specific position is key. Some examples that, that come to mind are 3D printers, CNC machines, robotics, and many others. Alright, so now let's go ahead and review the pins for A4988 stepper motor controller. First, we have the enable pin on the top left, which is basically used to enable the A4988 driver. This, uh, the driver is enabled by default. So basically you would use the pin only to disable it by providing a logic one or high into that pin. So if you don't plan on ever disabling it, you can just leave it unplugged. Then we have MS1, MS2, and MS3. These pins are basically used for micro step in selection. Different combination of inputs are gonna allow you to have a different micro stepping option. So you can see that if you want uh, full steps, so no micro stepping, you would just leave all three pins as low, no input. And if you wanted to just do this with no option of changing, you can leave these pins completely unplugged and not put anything from the Arduino or any other microcontroller into them. But if you wanted to pick options, uh, you would have to pretty much follow the table below. So let's say you wanted half steps, you would send the input high to MS1 and send low to the other two. If you wanted quarter steps, you would send a high in MS2 and low to step, or sorry, to pins MS1 and MS3. If you wanted an eighth step, you would send high to MS1 and MS2. If you wanted 16 steps, it would be high on everything. Now, what would this achieve? If you went with full steps, you would take 200 steps per revolution. If you did half steps, you would do 400 steps per revolution. If you did quarter steps, you would do 800 steps per revolution. If you did eight steps, you would do 1600 steps per revolution. In 16 steps, it will be 3200 steps per revolution. That is assuming that on full steps, you do 200 steps per revolution to begin with per your motor. So essentially, you increase the resolution 
and your motor moves smoother from step to step or from angular rotation because now it's not doing individual larger steps rather than it's doing individual smaller steps. So then we have the reset and sleep buttons. Uh, the reset basically when activated it ignores all inputs sent to the step pin which we'll review later after we go through this one. Uh, so reset is activated when it's pulled down. So this pin is floating. So a way to keep it high is by keeping it connected to the sleep pin, uh, which the sleep pin can be used to minimize power consumption when the motor's not in use. So if you want to put the car to sleep, basically. So now we can go over the step and the DIR or DIR uh, pins. So step, this is where you tell the stepper motor controller or driver that you want to move the stepper motor by one step or it will basically that step will be defined by the micro stepping setting. Uh, so a signal high equals one step uh, and then you will send it to low and then to high again. So the speed at which you send those pulses define how quickly we're really gonna be moving uh, our stepper motor or how quickly we're gonna go through the steps of the stepper motor. The DIR pin is basically for direction and it's either clockwise or counterclockwise. So, then we have VMOT, which is basically the volt input voltage into the motor. Um, so the A4988 separate motor driver allows anything from 8 volts to 35 volts. But of course, what you need to plug in is <clears throat> based on your actual stepper motor requirements for voltage. So the motor I'm using for this example is a 12 volt motor. So I'll be connecting 12 volts in the examples that I'm going to show here. So then we have the ground pins, one on the second one from the top on the right side, pretty much the ones I'm showing here on the screen. These basically, you just need to connect to the common ground consistent with <clears throat> the ground for this pin, sorry, for this uh, driver, for the Arduino and everything else. We have 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B. These are essentially the output pins of our A4988 stepper motor driver, and these will be connected to your bipolar stepper motor. Uh, one loop goes through the stepper motor through 1A and, and 1B. So one loop from your stepper motor and the other loop will go through 2A and 2B. Make sure to look at your motor data sheet to confirm which set of cables are in the common loop and which basically what are your two loops from your four cables. Finally, we have VDD. This is the pin used to power the internal circuitry of your A4988. Acceptable voltage ranges from 3 volts to 5.5. We also have the current limit control. This is essentially a potentiometer that is used to prevent the current flowing through your stepper motor from exceeding its max rated current. So you will want to make sure to check the amps for which your motor is rated and then to properly set up this current limit control such that you don't exceed it. To avoid exceeding it, you want to define the reference voltage, VREF. So I'll walk you through how to do that. Uh, and do it specifically for the motor that I'm using in the examples under this video. So for my motor, the limit is 0 0.4 amps or 400 milliamps. The rule of thumb is to divide this value by 2.5 ohms. When we divide it by 2.5 ohms, we get 0 0.16 volts. So that is the reference voltage that I'm going to be going for. One more thing. The A4988 stepper motor driver has a max continuous current of 1 amp per phase without using any heat sink or any other sort of cooling. Whereas it can be up to two amps with proper cooling. So make sure you're taking this into account and compare it to your motor current to make sure you're not exceeding the maximum current that this device can handle. So now to measure the reference voltage, I went ahead and I have my voltmeter. I'm gonna turn it on. I have the ground clip connected to ground on our stepper motor driver and the positive end of my multimeter, I have it clipped with alligator clips to the screwdriver. So now I can turn on, sorry, if I turn anything on, I'm gonna unplug the motor. I'm gonna turn it on and I'm gonna use the screwdriver while I turn the potentiometer to read the actual value as I turn it. So let's go ahead and place it, get my hand off. So for mine, it was a 
400 milliamp limit on our stepper motor. If I divide by 2.5, I get 0 0.16 volts. So that's what I'm shooting for. So I will turn slowly. Went too far. Now I'm just going to tweak it a little bit. to Try to get to the number I want. I think that's good enough for me. So let's turn it off. We can remove this. Take this off. I can remove my negative end of the multimeter. Then there's my motor. Now I can just go ahead, let's turn this off. Connect again the motor. So now I can go ahead and turn it on. So now let's go ahead and cover our connections between our A4988 separate motor driver, uh, an existing NEMA 14 motor that is my use and is on 12 volts, and an Arduino Uno. So we can see that we have the enable pin disconnected. This is because in this example, I'm not using anything to necessarily go disable, and I didn't have any interest in using that. We have MS1 through MS3, so MS1, MS2, and MS3 connected to IO pins 7, 6, and 5. These are the pink, cyan, and purple cables. Then I have reset and sleep connected together, and they go to IO pin number 4, if you were ever to send any commands that way. I don't do it in any of the examples I'm showing. Then we have a number 3 that goes to step, and number 2 will be for direction. Now, we can see in the outputs through, so basically 1A, 1B, 2A, and 2B are going to their stepper motor. This is one loop, this is the other loop. We have BMOT connected to a 12 volt power supply, because this is a 12 volt motor. And we have ground connected to that ground. Also, we have a 100 microfarad capacitor and that's to smoothen your uh, voltage supply and to make sure that you provide a consistent voltage free of fluctuations or to help at least in that sense. Uh, we ground our power input which we're sending as 5 volts going both into the motor controller as well as the Arduino and then 5 volts going into the motor controller and the Arduino. You could also power the Arduino through either one of these ports if that's what you wanted. Now let's go over our connections between the stepper motor driver, a Node MCU, and the stepper motor, which again is a NEMA 14. Uh, we can see that we have enabled disconnected. We have MS1 connected to D7. We have MS2 connected to D0 and MS3 connected to D8. We also have reset and slip all connected together, going to D6. Step in this one is going to D5, where direction is going to D4. Then we have ground for both sides, you know, the top and the bottom on the card connected to respective grounds for the voltage supply going for the logic as well as for the motor. We have VDD connected to 5 volts, which is also connected to the Arduino VN, sorry, the, the Node MCU VN, which is also have a ground pin connected to the ground on the power supply and then we have the motor powered with 12 volts with a capacitor in between them of 100 microfarads and then we have the blue cables on 2B and 2A going to one loop of the stepper motor and then we have the green one 1A and 1B going to the other loop. So now that we have covered this let's go ahead and jump into Arduino IDE. So we're here in Arduino IDE, and one of the first things we'll have to do is download and install the required libraries. The easiest ways to do that is just go to click on Sketch at the top, then go to Include Library, and then Manage Libraries. You can also, as you can see, just press Ctrl-Shift-I if you wanted to. Let's go ahead and click here. So your Library Manage will pull up and load, and what you need to do 
is type here in the search bar stepper then driver and you will see this one uh, at the bottom that is my letter to new Badia. I think I'm pronouncing it right uh, you can see mine's already installed, but all you have to do is then go ahead and click install after picking the right version if needed. So once you install it, you will be able to run the examples that I'm going to show you. So go ahead and do that. I will be walking you through the code for each of the examples that we'll be testing in this video. But note that you can go to my website, DIYengineers.com, and look for the link in the description of this video. Uh, it'll have some of the stuff that we already went through and more. Um, you can look through the pictures in the description. But the key is it has the code for the examples that we're going to go through with the Arduino Uno and the Node MCU uh, broken into each sections. So here are the AE4988 examples for the Node MCU. And I'll show them one by one where you can easily copy and paste them into your Arduino IDE. And then the same here for Arduino Uno. So go ahead and go to DIYengineers.com and take a look at the code. All right, let's get back to Arduino. All right, so I'll be walking you through four examples with the A4988 separate motor controller. Um, all these that I will be showing on the video will be based on the Node MCU, but note that in DIYengineers.com, as I showed you, you can copy and paste for either, for either this one or Arduino Uno, or really, I mean, you could adjust the code for any other board. Uh, but I do have it pre-written for Node MCU and Arduino Uno. And for this video, to avoid showing eight different codes, I'll just be showing the one for the Node MCU. So in this first section, we assign the pins which wish we had connected our A4988 consistent with the diagram I showed earlier. Then we assign the motor specs. So I'm saying it's 200 steps per revolution, I have, as I have mentioned before. If your motor is different, make sure to adjust this. For this example, I'm running it at 100 RPM or 100 revolutions per minute. And I've assigned the micro step into one. In this case, step side one equals full steps, uh, two for half steps, four for quarter steps, etc. So then we provide the parameters for the A4988. And these are just pretty much the pins that I assigned earlier. Then we go into the setup where we assign the mode of some of the pins uh, and we also begin stepper uh, and we assign the RPM and the micro step parameters that we just created. And then on the void loop, all I do is do a digital write, put the sleep to high, which is pretty much remove the sleep and keep it already always um, not sleeping or active. And then I use the function stepper rotate. Uh, with 360 to keep it rotating constantly at the RPMs that we already assigned. So all you have to do now is go ahead and click upload and let's go ahead and see what happens. Now let's go to the next example. I didn't change any of the parameters on the inputs defining the pins. I did change the RPMs to one revolution per minute. The reason is this is an example where essentially the shaft rotates like a clock. So one RPM is as fast as the handles of the second in a watch would rotate. So essentially everything is the same, everything else relative to the other one. So let's go ahead and look what happens when we run it. As you can see, once it starts running, it pretty much moves at the speed of a clock, or at least second handles. And you can see uh, each step moving as the stepper motor takes step by step. Given it's moving relatively slow, it's easier to notice. And this was running at full steps, so you can see them more discreet. As it runs, so for the next example, we'll be running the same code with the only change being we're going to now micro step. And you will see how maybe some of those steps that you're noticing here will be a little bit less noticeable. Might not be perfect because it's still running slow, but 
you will notice a little bit more smoothness. So let's go ahead and jump to the code for that. So now here's the code and really not many big changes with the only exception here for micro steps instead of a one I'm using a 16th so I'm taking the maximum uh, possible micro stepping allowed uh, so let's go ahead and run it and see how it looks now you can clearly see that the motion it's a lot smoother than we were doing full steps it's not perfect and part of it might be because we're going at a pretty slow speed but it is smoother in general so this is just for you to see the difference between full steps and micro stepping and you got to see you know what the difference in inputs is within your Arduino code. So next we'll go ahead and go to an example in which we'll be rotating the motor shaft to specific positions by going from the current position and this you know moving either clockwise or counterclockwise at defined number of steps. So let's go ahead and take a look for that. So now this is the final example. All the inputs at the beginning stay the same. I did increase the RPMs back to 100 and micro stepping changed it back to 1. All this, most of it is actually the same, really, uh, that we had before, with only a few minor changes. But now let's go ahead to the void loop. We have the right, this is the same as before. Now we go use the function stepper move, and I'm saying 400 to move 400 steps clockwise. For my motor, it's a 200 stepper revolution motor, so this essentially is I'm doing two full turns clockwise. Then I'm gonna wait a second, then I'm gonna go in the opposite direction, two steps, sorry, two revolutions, so 400 steps wait a whole second then I'm gonna move 50 steps which is 90 degrees in one way then wait another second do 100 steps in the opposite orientation and then come back to the same starting point with another 50 steps clockwise so let's go ahead and take a look at how this looks Alright, so this concludes this video. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Hope to see you in the next one. Thank you very much.